Next, we will talk about smart grid. First, let's look at the composition of a typical power system. It consists of power generation, transmission, transformation, distribution, and consumption. The generator in the power plant converts energy such as chemical energy or potential energy of the water in hydropower stations into electric power. The electric power is then boosted to 35 to 500 kilovolt, 800 kilovolt, or even over 800 kilovolt by the substation and transmitted down a high voltage power line. When it reaches a substation in the power receiving area, the voltage is reduced to 6 to 20 kilovolt. Afterwards, the electric power is transmitted to the power distribution substation through the power distribution line with the voltage reduced to 380 volt, which can be used in household circuits. Such a system requires power generation, transmission, transformation, distribution, and consumption. In the meantime, the communication network is also needed for control and management. What are communication methods involved in power grid communication network? Ultra high voltage, extra high voltage, and the high voltage scenarios are mainly distributed in, in the national backbone network, provincial backbone network, and the MAN. Due to small number of these nodes, communication can be achieved by deploying optical fibers or building a private network by electric power companies, by electric power companies themselves, on which ONM is not complex. However, in power distribution and consumption, there are a large number of power distribution cabinets. There are a large number of power distribution cabinets and even hundreds of millions of electric devices. As such, costs of deploying optical fibers and operation maintenance in these low voltage scenarios can be extraordinarily expensive. Thus, it is more suitable to use wireless methods to achieve wide coverage and massive connections for power distribution for power distribution and consumption. Next. Let's talk about the current state of the power grid communication network. An electric power company has multiple, has multiple departments. For example, the operation and inspection department is mainly responsible for power distribution automation, inspection, and security detection, which have high requirements on network isolation, which has higher requirement on network isolation, reliability, and latency. In addition to using operators DPRS and 4D networks for inspection services, optical fibers are also frequently used in these services. For the marketing department, power consumption data collection predominantly uses DPRS-based electric meters, while other services may use the 4G network. In general, based on different service, based on different service requirements, some use optical fibers and some use operators 2G and 4G public networks. In the operation and the inspection department, the usage of optical fibers accounts for 30%, and that for operators' wireless networks accounts for 70%. In the marketing department, the latter is higher. As power grid requires higher reliability, operators' public networks may pose security risks on these services. In addition, GPRS services on the public network result in long latency and a low online rate, and cannot support the three control functions, telemetry, remote communication, and remote control. Despite the feasibility of utilizing 4G networks for monitoring services, the costs are high. To sum up, some key services of the power grid communication network still use optical fibers. However, a large number of services also use operators' public networks, leading to security and reliability risks. Traditional power grids are developing towards smart grids. For example, new energy such as wind and solar energy is used for power generation, which is clean and eco-friendly. However, this may be unstable. The power generation efficiency may decrease, or the power cannot be even generated at night or on cloudy days. Unlike coal-based power generation that is continuous and stable, new energy power generation requires stricter control over the power distribution network. In addition, 
there is a new requirement for secure and efficient power transmission. That is, no power supply interruption. It is required to ensure reliable power supply for high-end devices. Moreover, smart automation of distributed power distribution and a millisecond-level precise load control will pose higher requirements on networks such as low latency and higher reliability. There will also be more and more new types of use cases, such as charging piles in big cities and highway services areas and highway service areas. Another use case is diversified interactive power consumption. Currently, the redundant electricity generated by the home solar panels can be sold to power grid companies. As such, the power transmission network becomes bidirectional, characterizing a diversified interaction power consumption. In general, during the evolution from traditional power grids to smart grids, we can see that more and more new requirements are put forward for communication networks. Here is a summary of communication requirements for power distribution and consumption. In power generation, distribution, and transformation, due to small number of nodes and the significance to production area services, optical fibers are mainly used, with wireless networks as supplement. However, in power distribution and consumption, it is not economically feasible to solely utilize optical fibers to connect tens of millions of power distribution cabinets in a city. As a result, wireless coverage is more suitable for these wide area scenarios. As power consumption does not involve production services of the power grid, wireless mode is suitable for electric meters used by homes and companies to report data. We can see that there are various services in the power grid, such as video inspection, power distribution automation, and the metering, with differentiated requirements on the network latency and the transmission bandwidth. For example, differential protection requires an end-to-end -end latency of 15 milliseconds, but the reserves less than 10 milliseconds for communication, which is strict. There are also requirements on latency and the transmission of trunking, of trunking voice dispatching, because maintenance personnel need to use the voice call function during the production and the O&M of the power grid. Video inspection is not sensitive to latency, but it has high requirements on bandwidth. Therefore, based on different network requirements, services can be classified as follows. Low latency services are URLLC, video surveillance and inspection are EMDB, and services focusing on massive connectivity such as smart metering are MMTC. Therefore, the communication requirements in smart grid are mainly reflected in network latency, bandwidth, and reliability. 5G can meet diverse requirements of smart grid and serve as a source for other usage based on new energy. The smart grid is transformed from one way to two way. In addition, it will evolve from centralized to distributed. Currently, the power grid communication network also faces some challenges. Optical fibers can only be used in the production areas to ensure high reliability while controlling the cost. In actual scenarios, 90% of power failures occur on low voltage grids in the last 5 km. As for the network requirements, they can be summarized as follows. First, the power grid communication network must have a reliability of 99.999%. In addition, Network slicing is needed to meet the differentiated requirements for power grid services, such as high reliability, massive connectivity, and a large bandwidth. Here are some typical services scenarios of the smart grid and their performance indicators. Smart automation of distributed power distribution is a service in the production area of the smart grid. Thus, it requires high security and isolation as well as, well as low latency. Precise load control is also a service in the production area of smart grid, posing high requirements on latency, isolation, and reliability. As for low voltage power consumption data collection, it refers to the data reporting of electric meters. This service has higher requirements on network connectivity to support millions of devices in a city. Distributed power supply, such as solar power stations, has been widely used in some areas. 
it has higher requirements on the connectivity and the reliability, but lower on latency. These four typical services of smart grid include the services in the production and management areas. Therefore, the communication network must be able to meet the different QoS requirements of these services. This is exactly what the 5G network is capable of. Cope with service-specific requirements on latency, reliability, bandwidth, and connectivity, 5G network slicing can be a top choice. Differentiated slices on a 5G network fit various scenarios of the power grid applications. For example, slicing can enable service isolation for power distribution and automation, which is an URLC use case, to ensure high reliability and a low latency. Power distribution automation and precise load control are services in the production area and need to be isolated from the services in management area, such as power consumption data collection. With 5D slicing, this isolation can be easily implemented. Next, let's turn to the architecture of 5G slicing. End-to-end -end slicing is available through the RAN, transport network, and core network. The upper layer is the slicing management module. The core network, which is now basically operating on the cloud, includes many control functions, such as scheduling, authentication, policy, and forwarding. Based on services, we should consider how to deploy these functions, whether they are needed, and where they should be deployed. Take low-voltage power consumption data collection as an example. Simply put, it refers to data reporting of electric meters. This is a typical MMTC service, and it is not latency critical. A large number of electric meters on the network need to be centrally managed for data reporting. As such, the core network functions can be deployed in the central data center. However, other services such as power distribution automation and a precise load control may have high reliability and a low latency requirements. Therefore, another slice is needed to meet such requirements. To achieve this, the core network functions need to be locally deployed. For example, to Edge Data Center, MEC. 5G base stations can quickly connect to the 5G modules in the Edge Data Center by accessing the transport network, achieving low latency. So, flexible slicing management can meet differentiated service requirements of the smart grid.